Having received a copy of the return warrant and the hour of the, of the meeting having arrived, the meeting is now in order. Would those who care and are able please uh, stand and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, to the Republic of Ireland, stands one nation under God, Thank you. As in previous years, we'll use a simple form of the rules that are shown in your packets. And where necessary, I'll rely upon the guidance of town meeting time published by the Massachusetts Moderators Association. If you wish to speak and you're able, please come down to the front and speak at either of the two microphones, stating your name and address. While this may seem a hassle to those who wish to speak, especially though for those who wish to speak briefly, I promise you it is of great benefit to the meeting in general, and it's worth it. If you're worried about being skipped, you're not having enough time to get down to the front, you can always rise from your seat at the appropriate time, say Mr. Moderator from wherever you are to get my attention, and then make your way down to the front to speak. Town meeting is not a question and answer time. It's a place for debate and voting. If you wish to have further information on the matter being debated, then you need to craft a statement that expresses that desire for more information on the matter. At a later point in the debate, someone who thinks they might have that information on that matter is certainly allowed to come forward and speak on the subject. That person will need to seek the floor in their own time if they wish to speak. Except in extreme circumstances, I'll refrain from imposing any time limits, but if the body would like to impose them, it may, either on a per speaker or a per article basis. I'll make an effort to recognize people in the order that they seek the floor with the condition that those who have not yet spoken will be given preference <laughs> over those who have already spoken on any particular article. It helps with the conduct of the meeting greatly when we have a copy of motions in hand prior to you making them. If you wish to make a motion to amend any of the items before us today, and it's more than just a few words, please make sure the clerk has a copy in the clerk's hand prior to making the motion. If you need some time to do this, just let me know. Getting it right is more important than doing it quickly. The clerk already has a copy of all of the main motions, so this just applies to new motions to amend. As in previous years, we'll not be reading the entire omnibus budget out loud, but the entire budget and all of its parts are obviously open for discussion and debate. After the main motion on the budget has been made and we're debating it, anyone can make a motion to either divide the question and address a piece separately, or they may merely request that any portion of the budget be amended. All registered voters have wristbands and colored cards. I think our first round of colored cards are actually white cards, but that's okay. We do this to avoid having to segment voters and non-voters and to make any possible ballot, ballot votes go faster. Don't lose your ballot, even if you don't plan on voting in the first vote we have, whenever that might be. If we have a second ballot, the only way you're gonna get the next color for the next vote, vote is by turning this one in. This is your ballot, please do not lose it. Last year I tried to save a little bit of time on the need for voice votes and hand votes all the time and I plan to expand on that this year. For items where there appears to be no debate and there will likely be consensus, instead of calling for an actual vote, I will state, if there are no objections, the motion will be adopted by unanimous consent. I'll then pause. If you object to the motion, this is your cue to say something. You need only say I object or some other dissenting but polite comment and I'll call for a vote. Your objection does not need to have a second. You don't need to, have to, you don't need to come forward to make that objection and you don't need to give a reason. Just say you object to that unanimous consent and we'll have a vote on the item. After I hear no objections, I will state, hearing no objection, the motion is adopted and I'll bang my gavel. After I bang the gavel, if anybody doubts the vote, they can immediately uh, doubt that vote and with the support of seven other voters, we can have another vote. Um, but after we move on to the next article, the time for doubting a vote is passed. Above all, despite all those rules that I just laid out, please don't let the formalities of town meeting get in the way of your participation. If you wish to make a motion or a statement and are unsure how to do so, just ask. Come down to the front or say Mr. Moderator and then come down to the front and just tell me what you're trying to do and we'll help you figure out a way to do it. So without further ado, we can proceed with the first item, Article 1, waiving the reading of the warrant. I don't think it was me. Oh, I thought it was the All right. I remember that happened before. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Moderator. 
I move the town vote to waive the reading of the warrant and the notice to the constables and act on the motions of the following articles. So this is what it will look like, I'll say, unless there's an objection, the motion will be adopted by unanimous consent. The motion is hereby adopted. <laughs> Article 2, to hear and act upon the reports. Mr. Moderator, I move that the town vote to hear and act upon the reports of the several town officers, boards, committees, commissions, and trustees. Is there a second? Second. If there's no objection, the motion will be adopted by unanimous consent. Hearing no objection, the motion is adopted. Okay. Article 3, Chapter 90. Mr. Moderator, I move that the town vote to accept and expend any sum or sums of money that may be available from the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, Massachusetts Department of Transportation for Chapter 90 type construction improvements and or reconstruction of public <coughs> ways and associated equipment and to authorize the select board to enter into contracts relative thereto and to appropriate said sum or sums in anticipation of reimbursement from the Commonwealth. If there are no objections, the motion will be adopted by unanimous consent. Seeing none, the motion is adopted. Article 4, applying for grants. I move the town vote to authorize the Board of Selectmen to apply for state or federal grants and to expend any monies received as set forth in the appropriate grant application. Second. Thank you. If there are no objections, the motion will be adopted by unanimous consent. Hearing no objection, the motion is adopted. Article 5, to pay a prior year's bill. Mr. Moderator, I move the town vote to transfer from free cash a sum of $115 to pay a prior, prior year's Conservation Commission bill. Second. Any discussion? Seeing none, if there's no objection, the motion will be adopted by unanimous consent. Hearing none, the motion is adopted. Article 6, on the levy limit. I move that the town vote to approve that upon exceeding the levy limit, any monies appropriated that exceed the town finance committee recommendations under Article 7 or any other article of this fiscal year 19 annual town meeting may be contingent upon the approval by the voters of an override of Proposition 2 and a half. Second. Thank you. Any discussion? Seeing none, if there are no objections, the motion will be adopted by unanimous consent. Hearing no objection, the motion is adopted. Article 7, the omnibus budget. Mr. Moderator, I move that the town vote up under the provisions of the general laws of Massachusetts, Chapter 41, Section 108, or any amendments thereto to fix the salaries of all elected officials for the fiscal year 19 and raise and appropriate the sums therefore and the sums for the maintenance of the several departments of the town and for other necessary charges in accordance with the amount recommended by the Finance Committee as shown in the final column of the warrant. Second. Okay. Thank you. Discussion. Okay. I'd like to point out to you why the Finance Committee goes through such a detailed process every year to be able to present our recommendations to you regarding budgets for our various departments, boards, and committees as well as our recommendations for what we call special article requests, such as those for a fire truck and a police cruiser. Massachusetts General Law, Chapter 39, Section 16, states that every town whose valuation exceeds one million shall provide for an advisory or finance committee, quote, who shall consider any or all municipal questions for the purpose of making reports or recommendations to the town, end quote. In every town having a committee appointed under authority of this section, such committee shall submit a budget at the annual town meeting and make recommendations to the voters on expenditures. A town administrator is involved in preparing the budget. In our case, our town accountant has been able to handle this for us this year. We on the Finance Committee are not just going to rubber stamp, and I guess people have heard me say that, a budget that someone has prepared regardless of who it is. We take our responsibility seriously and want more information than just a list of figures. For that reason, you hear me speak every year 
about the process we go through in gathering the information that we need on which to base our recommendations. This involves receiving all the budget and capital article requests, reviewing them, setting up schedules to interview many of those who had submitted requests, to discuss their justifications for these requests, then consider the amount of money available from various sources and go through our deliberations to come up with our recommendations for you voters, as we are required to do by law. Before finalizing our recommendations, we always meet with the select board for their input. They are in complete agreement with the recommendations being presented for the upcoming fiscal year. There is a great deal of information contained in the warrant packet, including the budget summary. In addition, there is general information from the Finance Committee and a spreadsheet showing the source of funds for each of the money articles before you tonight. We are presenting an operating budget of almost eight and a half million. Within this, we are recommending a 2.75 cost of living adjustment in wages for our employees and in the stipends that some of our elected officials receive. There are also some step raises earned by our employees under the town's pay plan that are included. Our recommendations include our share of the operating budget of the PVRS district. Their request this year is for almost four and a half million or 5.4% over last year. Our tech school assessment request decreased 12.1% due to the reduction in enrollment from Northfield. In addition to the operating budget, we are recommending funding for articles, some of which are police cruiser, police radios, fire department ladder truck, and others, and various and NES and NL elementary school improvements. Projects funded by CPA funds uh, will be considered tonight. You will hear more about these as we go through the articles and we are supporting our, with them with our recommendation. We are also looking to put some money into our stabilization fund, which is the town's savings account. We here at this table are your finance committee. We are all homeowners in Northfield, thus we're taxpayers, so we have a vested interest in what we're doing here. The budget model shows an estimated tax rate of 1741, a reduction of 45 cents based on a recommended expenditures. We would appreciate your supporting the recommendations of the Finance Committee. Thank you. Any further discussion on the item? Got the right figures, didn't I? Yes, please come down to the front. Just for clarity, what was If, read, if you could just state your name and your address yep. first. Yep. Andrew Goodwin, 129 Gulf Road. Thank you. So for clarity, what was spoke, spoken was raise and appropriate versus what is written transfer from any available fund. Can you just talk a little bit closer to the mic? I'm pretty yep. sure that one's on. Um, the question I have is what was spoken was raise and appropriate. What is written is raise and appropriate or transfer from available funds. So are we voting on what was spoken or what was printed? I got raise and appropriate. Right. My copy says raise and appropriate. I think what what you're referring to is, is we, we keep the we keep the oh, yeah the article the article is general but the motion is specific so the article is going to list every possibility of what could happen the motion as spoken specific. is specific as to the source okay yes. thank you the, as a point of information the motions that are made under an article may vary significantly but they must be within the scope so we, the, the town is only allowed to do what the motion states. If there's a discrepancy, um, it, it is the motion itself that prevails, not the warrant article. And any motion, while it can deviate from the article, it must be within the, within the purview and within the scope of the article. It can't go beyond it. Is there further discussion on the omnibus? Yes, uh, come on down. Brian Bordner, Ash Bullet Road. I'd like to address the omnibus as a whole. And I'd like to invite you to have the courage to join me in voting against it. And I'd like to explain why. Um, if you do the math, eight and a half million dollars, 29, 3,000 people in town, that's a load of a about $2,900, almost $3,000 per man, woman, and child 
in this small community. A couple of years ago, I did some research and found out that about a third of Northfielders live below the poverty line, which is $2,500 or $25,000 a year. Uh, I'm going to make the assumption that though they are young people trying to stay and living in a town and old people trying to live out their years in a town. If that's the case, then their share of taxes, whether they pay directly or indirectly, is about 10% or better of what they make. In a town this size, eight and a half million dollars, my personal opinion is irresponsible. And the reason that it is, is there is nothing going on in this town. There's no industries moving in, there's nothing. Tax loads like this suck the oxygen from the room, leaving nothing else. And that's exactly what you see in Norfolk, nothing else. If you want to go to other parts of the country, go to Tennessee. My house in Tennessee, I would pay $1,200 taxes on. In this town, I believe I pay around 5000 My point being is, somewhere along the way, sooner or later, you're going to have to have the courage to come back and say, we've abandoned the principles of Yankee frugality that got us to live here in the first place. So, if you'd like to join me in voting against the omnibus, please, I'd love the company. But I don't mind being the only person in the room to vote against it. I've done it before. Further discussion on the item? Any further discussion on the omnibus budget? Yes. I saw a hand. My name is Judy Walter and I live on Gulf Road, 803. I'll join the former speaker, being someone who lives under the poverty level, not because I'm young, but because I'm old. This year, I had to disconnect my internet and landline in order to pay the raise in my taxes. I don't know what else I can cut out next year, especially because I now have custody of a grandchild. So I have two people to support on the same fixed income. And I know I'm not the only one in this boat. So I agree with the principles of Yankee frugality. I have to question why a school budget is increased so much when the population has decreased in the school. And I think the school needs to recognize at some point that it needs to solve the problems of, of um, uh, that many other rural districts also face of it's financially impossible to have a graduating class in a high school as small as this and to try to um, give everything that kids of that, that age deserve to have. There has to be another way of schools joining um, together so that um, all of the towns aren't faced with the same costs. Further discussion? I'm missing anybody? Just holler. Seeing no further discussion, would all those in favor of the motion please signify by saying aye? Aye. All those opposed, please say nay. Nay. Clearly passes. Article 8, PVRS Capital Projects Request. I move that the town vote to raise and appropriate the sum of $10,372 to fund the projects, goods, and services related to Pioneer Valley Regional School District as, a, as presented in Article 8 of the warrant. Before there's a second, can you just re uh, repeat the number? 10,372. 872. 872, excuse me. 
You say it one more time. <laughs> Ten thousand eight hundred and seventy-two. Perfect. Is there a second? Second. Thank you. Discussion. Does anybody wish to speak to the item? <coughs> Seeing none, unless there's objection, the motion will be adopted by unanimous consent. Hearing no objection, the motion is adopted. <coughs> Article 9, PVRS lunch deficit. I move that the town vote to raise and appropriate the sum of 44406 to pay down the portion of Pioneer Valley Regional School District's lunch deficit. This appropriation is made contingent upon town meeting approval by all four district towns and with the strongest advisory expectation that there will be no reoccurrence of further lunch deficits in the future. Second. Thank you. Discussion on this item? Yes, please come on down. Hello, uh, Bob McEwen, Pine Meadow Road. I've been hearing of this, and I'm just curious about it, how it accumulated, that amount of money, and how, uh, if children were going in and ordering lunch and not paying for it, how, you, how DOR, how the state can hold the town accountable for what uh, was spent on children's lunches. I'm just not clear. Further discussion? Um, I would yes, ask... Uh, Gail Healy, who is um, assistant superintendent to address this. She's been working with lunch programs for quite a few years. She doesn't know all of the answers, but most of them. Yes, please. Yep. When I joined the district in 2008, there was a substantial debt that was occurring for the school lunch program. And over the course of the last 10 years, it has increased. I can tell you what, we, what I've done to work towards that in the past 10 years to decrease that. Um, there were a number of families in the district that owed a tremendous amount of lunch money. I asked them for lunch money. We took them to small claims court. I created payment plans as you would for your car for them to be able to pay over the course of time because some of them were extremely high. I would say the majority of those have been paid off. The rest of them, there are families that moved away, and I can't, you know, I wasn't encouraged because of legal expenses to chase people that moved perhaps out of state. The school committee adopted a policy, which was something that the district did not have previously, that you have to pay for your lunch, you're encouraged to pay for lunches ahead of time. If you get up to a certain at Pioneer, you have to pay for your lunch. At the elementary school, when you get up to a total debt of $12, your, a telephone call is made. No child at the elementary level is not fed, but we do have great success with that, and there are not, I don't spend the summers chasing all four towns of people who perhaps did not pay their lunch bills. And presently, through the last two years, three years of consolidating where we cook the food and bring it to other small elementary schools and cutting of, fact of staff at, in the cafeterias in all schools, we presently run at a slight, not deficit, but we have a, a small amount of money as a profit. Thank you. Any further discussion on the item? Yes, Brian. Brian Bordner, Ashwillet Road. Uh, I want to talk about the magnitude of this debt. This is not a little bit of debt. This isn't a um, small occurrence that got identified and addressed quickly. And as Gail said, this was an ongoing, yearly reoccurring event that failed to be addressed. Now. We voted a budget here, I do believe, every year. And most of the other departments in town stay within their budget. But the school didn't, and they didn't address it. What's more troubling is the people who were responsible for addressing it 
were six-figure people. We were compensating these people a lot of money. And to my calculation, roughly, the superintendent and the principal over a seven to eight year period took home about a million and a half to turn around and leave us <coughs> with a $300,000 debt. Now, if you vote this in and say yes, which I'm sure you will, I just want you to understand what you're doing. You're not voting to endorse incompetence, because I don't think it was incompetent. It was indifference. People were paid to do a job, they failed doing it, and they continued to fail doing it, and they were continually being not held back to address the situation, okay? These were big paid people, so go ahead, vote the thing in, but then this isn't a democracy, this is just theater. The budget's just theater, voting on it. That's all it is. So. Any further discussion? Seeing none, would all those in favor please signify by saying aye. aye. All those opposed, please say nay. nay. Clearly passes. Would anybody who objects please rise? Would anybody objecting to the vote? Thank you. You can sit. We will have a hand vote and we'll use the counters. We'll take just a minute for the counters to, do we have the counters all here? All right, when you raise your hands, you can raise the hand with your wristband on it. Counters, are we ready? All those in favor, please raise your hand and keep them up until I say otherwise. This section, you can lower your hands. The far section, you can lower your hands. Does somebody get the whole middle? We got the whole middle, right? All right, we can lower your hands in the middle. And I, somebody got the stage? All right, stage can lower their hands too. All those opposed, please raise your hand. All right, this side, you can put your hand down. Well, it's a deficit. It's not the far left, you can put your hand down. I mean, it's money that's In the middle, please keep your hands up. It's you sat in the big section. It takes a little bit longer. All right, in the middle, you can put your hands down. And give me just a moment. The vote is 81 in favor, 76 opposed. It clearly passes. Yes, in the back? In the back, yes. Absolutely. Please please rise and if you can come down to the front. Yep. Please. Bill Kilpatrick, 166 Gulf Road. If it took 10 years to acquire this deficit. Why are we trying is, is, to Is this a question about the process or is this debate on the article? I'm sorry. Well, that's a question on the article. We, we, we have completed debate on the article. I'm sorry. Further debate on the article is not in order. Article 10, to revise the annual town meeting schedule. 
Mr. Moderator, I move that the town vote to establish the annual meeting of the town to be held on the last Saturday in April of each year at 9 a.m., beginning with the fiscal year 2020 annual town meeting, pursuant to the provisions contained in Massachusetts General Law, Chapter 39, Section 9, as amended. Second. Thank you. Discussion? Please. Yes. Many in town are unable to attend town meeting each year because it is in the evening. Currently, almost a thousand, a third of our population is 60 plus. Additionally, about 200, about a 15th of our population, has children aged birth to 13. In a town of approximately 3,000, this means that almost half of the population has potential difficulty getting to an evening meeting. I have found that on both ends of the age spectrum, evening meetings are difficult. There are seniors and others who don't go out at night, period. There are families with young children who cannot get out at night. There are students who may be going to school at night. There are folks who work who do not want to go out to a night meeting after a long day. With regular town attendance hovering around 200, and last year it was 140, a lot of decisions are being made by a 15th of the population. In a town with 2,206 registered voters, decisions are being made by very few and they affect us all. In the spirit of involving everyone in town, making town meeting accessible to all ages means that the wisdom of our elders, the enthusiasm of our youth, youth and the time of those in the middle makes us stronger together. We can all learn from one another and we all have much to share together. Town meeting is often the only place we all meet. By having it on a Saturday morning, the afternoon is free for other activities. With free babysitting, only asking for a donation of a snack, families don't have to incur an additional expense allowing both parents to attend. By having it in, having it in the morning, those to, who don't go out at night or who can't will be able to participate and there will still be time in the day to do other activities. The more we are involved at the local level, the more we can contribute to a dynamic community. It is important to consider the obstacles many may have to attending. With some coordination and creativity, we can make this a positive town event. There is much that competes for our time these days and we are only talking about one day a year. We can be a strong community when we work together and support each other. Many decisions are made at the meeting and everyone has a stake in it. There are very few places in government any anymore where your voice matters. This is a strong one. You have opinions about what's happening in town and your voice should be heard. Thank you. Is there further debate? Yes. In the far back. And if you know you might want to speak next, you can certainly use time to come on down to the front and be closer. Yes. I'm Lucy DiGasaldi. I live on Main Street. And I just wanted to say that to, if people really want to change it to Saturday morning, that's fine. But to change it on the assumption that seniors 60 or over have difficulty or typically don't go out at night could be an erroneous assumption. All the people I know who are around my age go out at night all the time. I am 67. I have no problem going out at night. However, I am still working. And Saturday morning, I am exhausted. I would not, probably not, come to the meetings if it was Saturday morning now. I think there, are other, there may be other objections that other people have to Saturday morning. I don't know. I mean, I'll go with whatever people want, but just wanted to say that. <laughs> Thank you. Yes. Kate Wilner, Linden Avenue. I'm going to make an assumption here that the reason it wasn't proposed to be on Sunday morning is because a number of our neighbors go to church. I'm going to make a friendly amendment that it be switched to Saturday afternoon because there may be folks among us who go to synagogue on Saturday morning. I don't know that that was considered, but I think it would be a respectful thing to do. Further debate. Yes. Hi, uh, Deborah Poti, Main Street. Um, I think there are a lot of assumptions made about what people do during the week and also on Saturday morning. I know for many families who have children are very busy Saturday morning. I also know that it's possible um, to have babysitters here on a Monday night. I'm actually emailed um, the, some teachers at Pioneer hoping to have a babysitter here tonight. That did not happen, but that doesn't mean it cannot happen. 
So I would uh, really encourage people not to make assumptions about what is happening on a Monday night or a Tuesday night or on a Saturday morning because I think a lot of people are here and I don't think we would get more people here on a Saturday morning. Yes. My name is Brian Brault. Um, I very much like the spirit of this article. I think we need to do everything we can to increase participation. That said, I don't agree with all the assumptions that are made behind this article and other people that work on Saturday mornings. As already mentioned, there are kids that are in leagues. Um, I've, I've seen email discussion about this, talks about business owners in town that couldn't be able to get here. I'm not sure that we're enab perhaps enabling one group of people and dis enabling a different group of people from attending the meeting. So I'm questioning the assumption that this is actually going to increase attendance. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, over here. Joanne Flagg, Parker Avenue. Um, I'm wondering, it seems like the people who are here are making votes possibly for people who aren't here. And I'm wondering, I don't know where the information came from to create this uh, article, but I'm wondering if there has been a survey done around town of all the possible groups of people that we're trying to get to our town meeting, which is all of them. So I don't know if that's been done, but if somebody has an answer for that, and hopefully it has, but um, something to take into consideration before we pass a change. Thank you. Is there further debate on the item? Does anybody else who hasn't spoken wish to speak? Uh, anybody who has the answer can seek the mic as they wish. It's not really a question and answer forum. But yes. I'd like to address the, the Saturday morning. And yes, that was something I took into consideration. I, was, I don't know what the Jewish population is in town, but I very definitely thought about it. And um, I didn't have a way to get that information. In terms of a survey, there was one done the last time this was attempted, and there were many people who were in favor of it. Is there any further discussion on the item? Yes. Deb Terracano, Old Wendell Road. You know, our town meeting is the form of democracy that's the purest form of democracy. And I do believe that if people are going to make it to town meeting and they believe in our democracy, they will show up. Sadly, we don't show up. We don't stand up. We don't speak out. I think this is the most I've heard of people at a town meeting yet in a number of years. <laughs> since Stan Wiki passed away, I think. Um, I think we could try it on a Saturday. It's one day a year. Maybe your five-year-old has a soccer game. Maybe you have to work. Maybe your spouse works. But it's one day a year that maybe I, and thank you all for coming, by the way. This is a great turnout tonight. Um, but I think we could give it a try so that all members of the community could come. It is much easier to find a babysitter on a Saturday morning than it is a Monday night school night. And that's all I have to say. Any further discussion? Yes. Helen Johnson, Highland Avenue. I just want to say about Saturday morning in synagogue that regardless of the Jewish population, if we have town meeting on Saturday morning, it gives a message to anybody who might move to town that we're not welcoming to Jewish people who are, you know, practicing their faith. Mm -hmm. And I think that's a real problem. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yes. Ruth Poti, 55 Main Street. Um, so I actually think it's a really interesting discussion about when we should hold town meeting, because I think what a lot of us feel, for those of us who've been attending town meeting for year upon year, is we wish everybody of voting age in the town was here, right? And it's always disappointing mm -hmm. that there's any empty chairs. 
And I think that some of the comments that have come before this indicate there is interest in exploring this more, but I actually think we are absolutely not ready to vote this one in. This needs an exploratory committee and a, some, a recent survey. If anybody was reading Next Door News, man, it went back and forth and back and forth with some very strong opinions. So my suggestion is that we explore this this year. We get a lot more information. We get a better sense of what really might be the right time to disenfranchise as few people as possible. People work terribly difficult lives. People with multiple partner work multiple jobs with both partners at home. It's incredibly complicated to raise our kids and to go out when you have cataracts and you aren't safe to drive. I get all of that. I know I said the multiple partners thing, but I'm erasing whatever that was. Um, yeah, wrong, I'm in the wrong town, Steve says. Anyway, so I, I'm not going to make a formal um, Roberts Rules of Order to postpone this discussion, but I'm going to make a suggestion that this is something we explore in the coming year and we um, make a vote on this maybe next year. Further discussion? Yes. What she said. <laughs> but, but also, um, we, we enjoyed uh, ride sharing with an elderly citizen uh, a number of years until she passed and that's something that we're perfectly willing to do uh, we attend um, every every town meeting but we could not attend on Saturday morning we have a business that is operating very heavily on Saturday morning um, but I think a committee figuring out the daycare and the ride share and whatever makes a lot of sense and then do the survey with those options available. Thank you. Any further discussion on the item? Mm. Seeing none, we're going to try a voice vote. All's in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. All those opposed, please say nay. Nay. Clearly fails. Article 11, the EMS Enterprise Fund. Hello everyone. I move the town vote to appropriate the sum of $207,285 to operate the Emergency Medical Services Enterprise Fund as set forth in Article 11. Second. Thank you. Is there any discussion? Yes, Mark. Well, again, I want to thank everybody for your support of Norfolk EMS. Um, as you look at Article 11, you'll see that again we have $151,434 that we believe we will accumulate in revenue next fiscal year um, with $55,851 being the second payment towards the new ambulance. For anybody who's had an opportunity to take a ride in the ambulance, I apologize, but uh, for anybody who has seen it, knows that it's a fantastic uh, asset to the town of Northfield. Um, a couple things I just want to mention as we you probably have seen in the papers there's been some articles that Norfolk EMS is looking to expand the size of our enterprise the budget the budget that was proposed here was created 18 months ago for lack of a better time uh, back in November um, trying to see where we're going a year ahead Based on last year's call volume, we were down slightly. And unlike other departments who have the luxury of raise and appropriate or transfer from available funds, the departments that are sitting up here, the select board, the finance committee have tasked EMS to be self-supporting. Self Unfortunately, we have a monopoly on the town of Northfield. There's only so much revenue that's going to happen. People, unless I can make more people sick, which I really don't want to do, we have to think about expanding the size of the enterprise to help continue to pay for things. As Lois mentioned earlier, that they have supported a 2.75 increase in wages this year. Unfortunately, based on the down revenue, I didn't have that money in my budget. I only had 1% that I could appropriate towards EMS. We have tried to make some adjustments to the budget there have been drastic cuts that have been made in the expense line for next fiscal year based on the anticipated revenue. 
Um, so when you hear us looking to expand, that's the reason, is that we need to generate some more revenue. We have the capacity within our EMS service. Um, I have a su the support of the, of the select board. At a, a vote of the select board, they uh, approved for me to continue to seek out the expansion of the enterprise fund. And I hope that you support that as well so that we can continue to maintain quality service for you, the citizens. Any further discussion on this item? Seeing no further discussion. If there are no objections, the motion will be adopted by unanimous consent. Hearing no objection, the motion is adopted. Article 12, the Sewer Enterprise Fund. Nope. I motion the town to vote to appropriate the sum of $251,937 to operate the Sewer Enterprise Fund as set forth in Article 12. Any discussion? Any discussion? Seeing none, if there are no objections, the motion will be adopted by unanimous consent. Hearing no objection, the motion is adopted. Article 13, for various revolving funds. Mr. Moderator, I move that the town vote to adopt the revolving fund bylaw and establish fiscal year spending limits as set forth in Article 13. Any discussion? Yes. I just wanted to explain a little, as it does say in the paragraph um, after the article, this is a new mechanism that's allowed now by the Department of Revenue. Usually every year you have to vote these revolving funds every year. Um, we now, as long as we never change the dollar figure, you'll never have to vote on them again. I also want to call attention to two new ones that we have added in there. One is the Summer Playground Fund. So revenue from summer playground programs will go right back into the summer playground program. And also the Council on Aging breakfast and lunch programs, so the donations that are taken in during the breakfast and lunch um, will go right back into that program. Thank you. Is there any further discussion on the item? There are no objections. The motion will be adopted by unanimous consent. Hearing no objection, the motion is adopted. Article 14, a transfer. Yes. I'm a little confused that we're just looking for no objection and there's no vote. Is anyone else? I'm confused. Could you? As I explained in the beginning, um, we, we began this a little bit last year on items that I anticipate there will not be any objection to. I will ask if there's any objection to adopting the motion by unanimous consent. If anybody doesn't want to do that, they can just say I object and then we'll have a vote. If they okay. don't object, we can just sit there quietly and the motion will be adopted by unanimous consent. Okay. Do you have to see someone's hand or uh, They can say I object, they can say no, make it polite, make it loud enough for me to hear, I'll have a long pause and we'll have a motion. Okay. We'll, we'll have a vote on the motion. On Article 14, a transfer. Thank you, moderator. Uh, Matt Sheridan of Highland Ave. I am the uh, bookkeeper for the Recreation Commission. I make a motion to move the town. I make, excuse me. I make a motion to move the town vote to transfer the sum of ten thousand dollars from Northfield Recreation Commission's revolving fund to establish a new summer playground revolving fund. Any discussion? Is there any discussion on this item? And can I just clarify? Yep, uh, certainly. Just, just to clarify, that is funds that come in from the revenue that were uh, tuition for the summer program. So that was, there's really no new expenditures. It's just moving funds so we can operate the program, pay salaries, and, and things of that nature. Thank you. Any further discussion? If there's no objection, the motion will be adopted by unanimous consent. Pardon? All in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed? Clearly passes unanimously. 
Article 15, to purchase a police cruiser. Mr. Moderator, I move the town vote to transfer the sum of $48,000 from free cash to purchase a police cruiser and related equipment. Second. Any discussion on the item? Any discussion at all? If there's no objection, the motion will be adopted by unanimous consent. Object. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Aye. Clearly passes. Article 16, to purchase and install new police radios. Mr. Moderator, I move the town vote to raise and appropriate the sum of $9,000 to purchase and install new police radios and any necessary accessories thereto. Second. Thank you. Any discussion? Yes, Jeff. Uh, this is necessary. The, the police department needs to install a new radio system. The radio system they have now is uh, not going to meet the, mo the latest requirements. Thank you. Any further discussion? Yes, Mark. So what are the requirements um, for these radios? Um, as a member of the Shell Control Oversight Committee, I don't believe there's been any decision to move to the 800 system at this time. Rob Layton, Chief of Police. Uh, I live on Old Wendell Road. So really what it, what it is, is we're looking to purchase two mobile radios for our cruisers. Um, currently, we can't communicate directly with the state police, the environmental police, uh, Winchester, or Hinsdale police, because they're on a totally different frequency. So by purchasing 800 megahertz, megahertz radios, we'll be able to finally be able to speak with other departments who in emergencies come to help us. Now, I don't need to tell you how important it is um, safety-wise for a police officer in an emergency to be able to communicate with officers that are trying to help them. But um, really, that's what this comes down to. This will purchase two radios that we can put in the cruisers uh, so after the 31 years I've been working here, you know, we can finally um, speak directly to some of the departments that we work with. Thank you. Any further discussion? Is anybody who hasn't spoken wish to speak? Mark. So just for clarification, this is not because of a change in the operating system of the public safety system. This is a matter of interoperable communi communications with the state police who are, all, who are already on the 800 system. That, that's correct. The only reason I ask is because as public safety transitions to the 800, it's going to be a bigger conversation than just the police department, the fire department, EMS all public safety is going to have to be involved in this conversation to purchase these 800 radios. Further discussion? Does anybody who hasn't spoken wish to speak? Um, I understand what they're asking for, but I don't understand why there's not a dollar value attached to this, as are most things that we vote on. As a point of information, the, the, the motion did include $9,000 as the purchase price. Does anybody who hasn't spoken wish to speak? Yes, Rob. Thank you. So just to follow up, um, the current system we're on um, in Franklin County uh, it is an older system, and it's not really doing well. And uh, what the consensus, consensus is is that sooner or later, uh, as a county that's police, fire, and EMS, we're going to have to make a choice. Um, we're going to have to either um, dump a bunch of money into this system to fix it, or we're going to migrate to the 800 megahertz system, which is already built for this section of Massachusetts, and it's already ready to go, um, and there's ample space on it. So by the police department purchasing these radios in the event that we finally decide uh, as a county to switch over, we're already going to be ahead of the game. We're already going to have two radios that work on the 800 system, and you know that'll be um, 9,000 less dollars you'll have to spend in the future. Thanks. Any further discussion on this item? Any further discussion? Seeing none, all in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. All those opposed, please say nay. Nay. Clearly passes.
Article 17, Mr. emergency Mod services for facility. I'm sorry, Mr. Moderator, I move the town vote to raise and appropriate the sum of $68,825 to begin phase two of the design work and project management for an emergency services facility as set forth in Article 17. Discussion? Yes. Yeah, if I may, um, Skip Donnell, Fire Chief, 20 Hamilton Drive in Northfield. I'm also the Chairman of the Emergency Services Building Committee. I've asked the other committee members to just come down to show you the, show you the, the members that have been participating in this up until this point. Uh, this was actually passed over at, at the last special town meeting um, because there's some things that we needed to determine before we could would, would move forward with any type of a upgrade or emergency service building or even addition to the fire station at the current location uh, 91 uh, 93 Main Street I just want to give you a quick history I don't want to take a whole lot of time but we started this process back in 2010 when Jason Plattick originally formed the emergency service building committee we had a feasibility study for fire police EMS done in 2011 we looked at all different sites over seven of them eight of them um, in 2012 we developed site plans and that was taking the acquisition of 91 Main Street to purchase that and move towards a large public safety facility. It had a price tag of $8,800,000 if you recall for those that have went to the town meeting and it was, it was defeated and, and rightly so. Um, the committee was reformed in 2013. We went through the site selection, we revisited that. The feasibility study was reviewed and the space requirements were reduced from the original uh, study. The environmental impact was reviewed. We worked with the Conservation Commission in 2016 and found out that we needed for them to, to go forward, that we needed a, the site to be surveyed. So a survey was done. We hired Dale Mer Merritt from Vernon to survey the property. And at that point, we ran into a problem with the deed because we didn't have a clear registered deed for the piece of property that the fire station sets on. <coughs> so there's another article tonight that hopefully will resolve that issue. Um, but basically, what this is the next step in order for the process to determine how much of the land is buildable, what can actually fit on that land, and it involves the following items. It involves geotech borings and soil analysis, analysis to determine what the foundation requirements are going to be. It also is site survey overlaid onto a topographical map. It has included environmental services because we are bordering on a wetland, so we make sure that we don't do anything to the frogs and the salamanders and whatnot. Um, it actually is selection of a designer who will then come up with a schematic design and update a budget so we'll know what we're going to get for the dollars that we're looking for and an updated schedule. So this is the next step in the process of seeing what can be built at 93 Main Street. Thank you. Any further discussion? So Seeing none of the, pardon? He, he, uh, he's asking how much money. It was six, 68825 I believe. The motion was for $68,825. Any further discussion? Seeing none. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed, please say nay. Clearly passes. Article 18, to purchase a ladder truck. Mr. Moderator, I move the town vote to transfer the sum of $350,000 from free cash to purchase a ladder truck for the fire department. Any discussion? Again, Fire Chief uh, Skip Donnell, 20 Hamilton Drive, Northfield. Uh, this would be to replace our current ladder truck, which is a 1978 uh, LTI ladder that we purchased. Uh, it was 19 years old when we purchased it from the from Sutherland, Long Island Fire Department uh, in New York. Uh, it served the town now for 21 years. It's currently 40 years old. Um, some of the things that a ladder truck has. Uh, obviously, than a, other than a big price tag, it's pre-piped nozzle to the tip. It has breathing air, lights, and air to calm to the tip so you can communicate back and forth. It has a 1,200 GPM pump, 
push the water up the ladder, generator, lighting, saws, fans, is all a lot of the equipment that is held on it. We've had a ladder, this is actually our second ladder, and we did buy it used. Uh, it was 19 years old when we got it. We're looking to buy another quality used ladder that will hopefully last as long as this one has. Um, the issue with this ladder, the ladder itself is in pretty good shape. Unfortunately, the chassis and the truck underneath it is really is rotting out. Uh, we ended up spending over $3,000 just to replace some cross members underneath the frame of the, of the truck this year so it could pass inspection. Um, we obviously have used the ladder, and the ladder is a, is, a, is a great complement to the fire department, not only for the NMH campus, the bigger buildings that are up there, even though they're uninhabited at this point in time, we still have to provide fire protection for them, but hopefully in the near future, they'll be inhabited again. We have the large colonial homes along Main Street. We're encompassing more and more homes with metal roofing. We can't hook ladders to the roof. You have to, have to, have to work, work away from the roof. We obviously still have a lot of slate roofs. It's a great tool for chimney fires. We use it on, for ventilation, for structure fires. Um, and we can also, obviously it is also used for rescue. Uh, three fires that I can think of in the last 18 months that it was used and it was as a complimentary piece of equipment that really made a difference was the barn fire down in down in the farms where we were able to cut the fire off from the main part of the house. We had another barn fire on School Street. We actually used the, the ladder that night for ventilation to pull the fire away from away from the main part of the house and again we saved the house. And just recently we used the ladder, put the ladder pipe in operation in very short order to cut off the tie pile that was burning over in West Northfield. So it's an integral piece of equipment that, uh, that really makes a difference. It's safer and it's faster and it takes less manpower. And where a lot of departments now are hurting for, for personnel, you can set up and do operations on a, with a ladder truck, it takes two men. If you're gonna set up ground ladders and then roof ladders, it takes like six. So it's faster, it's safer, and, it, and it's better. So we are looking to purchase another used ladder, quality used ladder. Thank you. Further discussion? The motion that was made was for $350,000. What's the dollar amount we're talking about? The motion that was made was for $350,000. Any, any further discussion? Yes, Jack. Uh, free cash means uh, we can go out and buy the uh, ladder truck tomorrow. If it was raised and appropriate, we'd have to wait to till July 1st. Okay. When uh, uh, something is being funded by free cash, that means uh, we could go out and uh, purchase that thing or fire engine or whatever tomorrow. If it's raised and appropriate, uh, that means you have to wait to the next fiscal year to be able to uh, make that purchase. So you wouldn't be able to purchase it till July 1. And I understand the desire to have little bits of information, but other people in the audience can't hear you, the people at home can't hear you. If you have questions, please come to the mic, state what you desire to know, and if somebody wishes to answer that, they will. Is there any further discussion? Seeing none, all's in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed, please say nay. Clearly passes unanimously. Article 19 for projects at the Northfield Elementary School. Mr. Moderator, I move the town vote to raise and appropriate the sum of 146000 to fund the projects, goods, and services related to the Northfield Elementary School as presented in Article 19 of the Warrant. Second. Thank you. Discussion? I'd like, to, I'd like to go over the three items. The first one is to repair, replace, and bring to code electrical wiring. Last year we had a... Um, review done of the wiring systems at the elementary school and they clearly need updating. And the total cost of that will be $458,000. So what we're asking for this year is 100,000 to get started on that project. Uh, the second item for 40,000, I just wanted to clarify the explanation. 
We're talking about the um, entrance to Center School, which is the South Building. So that's not quite clear in the way it's written here. Uh, that has deteriorated and also needs replacement. And I also want to add that is not part of the um, CPA money that we're going to be using on the North Building front entrance. And then the last item is for our normal carpeting tile replacement. Any further discussion on the item? Yes. Mark Fortier, 579 Mount Herman Station Road. I just want to mention to the committee who put this article together, um, I was behind the elementary school today. You may want to take a look at that fire escape. It looks like it's about ready to tip over. You may want to add that to this article in the coming years. Any further discussion on the item? Seeing none, all's in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed, please say nay. Clearly passes unanimously. Article 20, land located at the intersection of Main Street and School Street. Mr. Moderator, I move the town vote to authorize the Board of Selectmen to acquire by gift, purchase, eminent domain, or otherwise a fee interest in a parcel of land as set forth in Article 20. Thank you. Discussion? Uh, yes, Jack is the mover. You can go first. Uh, the School Street property where the fire station is was uh, granted to Northfield so long ago, there is no clear documentation. Uh, we're confident Northfield owns it, but the ac actual dimensions uh, and other information about the parcel have never been incorporated into a deed. This will allow us to complete that documentation and have a deed for the site. Further discussion? Skip, did you? So I just want to add, we did a complete title search on the property. And back in 1686, it was considered the North Highway to Warwick, which is mentioned during the third settlement of Northfield. This is how far back the search went. In 1739, the term School Street was used as being part of that North Highway to Warwick. In 1774, the county record showed the parcel adjoining School Street as belonging to the inhabitants of Northfield. In 1880, the center school was built on that property, but burned down in the early 1940s. <clears throat> in 1953, there was verbiage of the parcel belonging to the inhabitants of Northfield again, and that's where the existing fire station was built. In 1986, the sewer easement recorded that parcel belonging to the inhabitants of Northfield. And we're asking a vote now be taken, so it's a limited, eminent domain so that the inhabitants of Northfield are going to take that piece of property and turn it over to the incorporated town of Northfield. No fees, no money, just a vote. Any further discussion on the item? Seeing none, all in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed, please say nay. Clearly passes unanimously. Article 21, establishing a trust fund to pay existing employment benefit obligations. Mr. Moderator, I move that the town vote to accept the provisions of Mass General Law, Chapter 32B, Section 20, as, a, as amended by the Municipal Modernization Act, Chapter 218 of the Acts of 2016, the Act, to establish an other post-employment benefits liability trust fund, the OPEB fund, as set forth in Article 21. Thank you. Discussion? Any discussion on the item at all? Seeing none, all in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed, please say nay. Clearly passes unanimously. Article 22, to fund the trust fund. Mr. Moderator, I move the town vote to transfer a sum of $131,427 from free cash to deposit into the town's OPEB trust fund established in Article 21. Any discussion? Yes. I believe a few years ago we had a study done to tell us what our future liability was to provide other post-employment benefits to our employees. This number does not quite make what our projection is, but it is the first step we are taking. And the, I believe the next article is to conduct another study 
to get an updated figure so we know going forward what our liability is. Thank you. Further discussion? Seeing none, all in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed, please say nay. Clearly passed it unanimously. Article 23, to fund the town's OPEB study. I move that the town vote to transfer a sum of $900 from free cash to fund the town's OPEB study for fiscal year 2019. Any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed, please say nay. Clearly passed it unanimously. Article 24, to fund a financial audit. I move the town vote to raise and appropriate a sum of $23,000 to fund a financial audit. Any discussion? Yes. Uh, we have protection for our firefighters and police officers if they get hurt in the line of duty. I'm sorry, I'm on the next article. There you go. Jumping ahead. Any discussion on Article 24? Seeing none. <laughs> Are you rising to speak? Are you rising to speak? Yes. Then please come down to the front. No, please come down to the front if you wish to speak, if, if you're able. There are lots of seats available in the front. I would like somebody to speak on that article, please. Uh, yes, this uh, provides a financial audit of all the town's finances. Uh, the last time we had one, I think, was, I don't know, five or six years ago. Uh, that audit came out great, but we should be doing it more frequently. We're also going to be bonding, hopefully, for the emergency services facility in the future. And to get a good bond rating or to apply for federal grants, we have to have completed a recent uh, audit of the town's finances. Any further discussion on the item? Seeing none, all in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed, please say nay. nay. Clearly passes. Article 25. Mr. Moderator, I move the town vote to accept the provisions of Massachusetts General Law Chapter 41, Section 111M, as set forth in Article 25. Second. Discussion. Okay, yes. we'll try this again. Uh, so as I was saying, we currently provide uh, medical benefits and salary for our firefighters and police officers if they get injured in the line of duty. Uh, this provision does not, the way we have it currently, it does not apply to our EMTs and paramedics. So we'd like to add them to our coverage. Um, I'd like to explain a little bit. This says that they would receive 100% of their regular wages. That is not their day job. You know, none of our EMTs are full time. They have a regular day job. This does not pay their wages of their day job. It would pay them the wages as if they were a full time firefighter or EMT in the town. And it will be covered by insurance. Any discussion? Yes, Mark. Yeah, so, so as Tracy said, is if, if uh, one of the EMTs currently was to go out and get injured, lifting, whatever it is, while providing service to the, to the citizens of Northfield, and they're out of, out of their day job, they would not be compensated currently as, as it is today. Um, you know, we have lives, we have families, we have be protected as well. So in order for to protect the people who are protecting you, we're at we're requesting that this be changed as the insurance for the insurance for the town. As with everything else related to EMS, the increase in the costs of the insurance is something that comes out of the EMS enterprise fund. So again, this does not cost the town, the citizens through taxation. This is something that's covered through the enterprise fund, the increase in the in the insurance coverage. Further discussion. Yeah, Ed Laraway, 125 Captain Beer Swain Road. I am a volunteer EMT. I have one question. 
I have one question. What is the salary of a firefighter or an EMT? This, this isn't a question and answer. Um, this if, is a if question of what I mean. She said it was a firefighter or an EMT salary is what this is based on. All I'm saying is this isn't a question or answer. If, if you wish to have more information, you can certainly get up and say that and then have a seat. And if somebody wishes to answer, they can seek the floor That's my in due question. time. I understand. Somebody wishes to speak. Yes, Tracy. Do you know the answer? Okay. I know it is a grade eight step one on our salary scale, and I apologize that I do not know the dollar figure of that. It would come out of insurance. We currently pay workers' comp insurance. This would be a different policy, but it would not, it would not be like it comes out of our operating budget that year when someone gets hurt. It would be covered by insurance. Yes, Mark. So to answer the question, so, some people, especially on the EMS department, are not going to receive coverage equal to what they're making currently in their day job. Um, a starting salary for a firefighter in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, I'm guessing probably around forty, forty-five thousand dollars a year. Um, and I know some of the people who are concerned on the EMS side of it make m well more than that in their day job. This is something better than what we have currently, which is a percentage of what you make as a call EMT. So if you do five calls a, a month, and you make $100, you may get a check for $20, and that's what you're expected to live on if you can't go to work. Any further discussion on the item? Seeing none, all in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed, please say nay. Clearly passes unanimously. Article 26, relative to medical expenses of first responders. Mr. Moderator, I move the town vote to accept the provisions of Mass General Law, Chapter 41. Section 111N as set forth in Article 26. Any discussion? Yes. Same idea. This would pay their medical expenses if they were injured on the job. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed, please say nay. Clearly passes unanimously. Article 27 on a home rule petition. Mr. Moderator, I move that the town vote to authorize the Board of Selectmen to petition the legislature for special le legislation as set forth in Article 27. Any discussion? Yes, Julia. Um, this would allow us to ask the state legislature to allow our current fire chief um, to continue serving in his current role. Any further and discussion? Oh, sorry. 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 Until 2023. Thank you. Further discussion? Skip. Yeah, I just want to give a quick explanation. Uh, about January, I got a notice from the retirement board that I was mandatory that I retire in August uh, because I turned 65. Now everybody knows my age. <laughs> um, this will allow this will petition the select board to to uh, petition the, uh, the the state basically to give me a five-year extension. Um, little history: I became a member of the department in 1971. Became first lieutenant in 1974, and in 1976 I was elected and appointed the fire chief in the department, which I have served for 42 years. Um, I'd like to uh, at least do another three years. That way, I would have completed 50 years of service to the town by providing fire protection for the community. Uh, I'd always like to finish the acquisition of a replacement ladder truck and hopefully break ground on the emergency services building or the fire station addition or what it ends up being. Uh, there may be a question as far as my health, my, my body as well, my mind is <laughs> <laughs> questionable. <laughs> but basically, just so you folks know, uh, I do get a physical, I get two physicals a year, one personal by my physician, and the other one I get is for my work related because I'm part of the hazardous materials response team for Sandry's, which includes uh, breathing tests and whatnot. So I am I'm healthy and I look forward to serving you for another five years. Thank you. Any further discussion on the item? <coughs> Seeing none, all in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed, please say nay. 
Could we pass it unanimously? Article 28, transfer station maintenance. Uh-oh. Hi, Bob McEwen, Pine Meadow Road. Mr. Moderator, I move the town vote to establish a transfer station maintenance appropriation for the purpose of repairing compactors, associated closures, structures, and decking, and to transfer the remaining $5,290 left in the transfer station compactor account into said new appropriation. And what this is is uh, we're tearing up the decking. Uh, we had to replace a compactor this year, and that was to the tune of 14800 it rusted away. So we're lifting and decking. We're going to replace some metal on the remaining compactors and truck rhino line or something just to prevent them from rusting out. And that's, that's uh, something we're going through now. So that's what that's about. Any further discussion? I did. Yes, there, there was a second, yes. Seeing none, all in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed, please say nay. Clearly passes unanimously. Article 29 for residential tax exemptions. Yeah, we're moving into the assessors now. Mr. Moderator, I move the town vote to authorize the Board of Selectmen to petition the General Court for special legislation relative to a real property exemption for disabled soldiers and sailors as set forth in Article 29. Second. Thank you. Discussion. Essentially, what this is is that if someone moves here uh, to the town, they needed to have six months prior to entering the service or then to have resided for five years, consecutive years, before they can file for the exemption. So we'd like to change that resi residence requirement from the five-year rule to just one year. Uh, there are not very many. This might be one or two veterans uh, every couple of years, so it's, it's not going to be a big cost to the town. And it could be as much as 400 or 1,000, depending on their disability rating. They could, at 10%, up to 100% disability, they could apply for this. Any further discussion? Yep. Yes. Yes, please come on down. Steve's coming down. <laughs> I support this bill. Uh, I also uh, feel compelled to point out that I have been in a number of public meetings now where uh, particularly elderly folks are feeling the pinch of taxes, and I think that something similar needs to be done to address that for the senior citizens who are feeling pinched, and I think I took the opportunity to say that. Thank you. Any further discussion on the item? Seeing none. Oh, was that an arm up to speak? No. Okay. Seeing none. All in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed, please say nay. Clearly passes. Article 30, a payment in lieu of taxes. One more, then I can sit down. Mr. Moderator, I move the town vote to authorize the Board of Selectmen to enter into a payment in lieu of tax agreement with the lessee or operator of the solar voltaic, solar vo photovoltaic energy generating facility located at Zero Mount Herman Station Road as set forth in Article 30. Uh, Second. Thank you. Cool. This is uh, not in place yet, but this would allow the selectmen to, to deal with them and discuss pilot. It would be, as we voted a, a year or two ago, to allow the selectmen to uh, enter into a pilot or a tax agreement with the pump storage facility. That's what this is about. Any further discussion on the item? Yes, Tracy. It's my understanding that solar panels depreciate very quickly, so if we do not negotiate this pilot agreement, we will not be getting, potentially not get as much tax as we would like. So this would allow us to negotiate for a higher payment than their taxes would bring in. Any further discussion on the item? Yes. Just to build on what Tracy said, um, if we enter into an agreement like this, we can be insured a more even uh, tax income from any project like this than if 
um, we were to just tax it as personal property. Further discussion on the item? Seeing none, all's in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed, please say nay. So they pass it unanimously. Article 31, CPA funds. I move the town vote to reserve from fiscal year 2019 Community Preservation Fund estimated revenues the sum of 5%, $1,250 for administrative expenses, 10%, 2,500 for open space purposes, 10%, 2,500 for historic preservation, 10%, 2,500 for affordable housing, and the remaining 65%, $16,250 to the fiscal year 2019 <coughs> Community Preservation Fund budgeted reserve. Second. Thank you. Discussion. Lara Dubin, 79 Maple Street. I'm a member of the Community Preservation Act Committee. Um, this is basically a housekeeping article. The state requires all the money that we, um, we raise through the CPA surcharge. Uh, it's that fund certain amounts are specific for certain needs so it's divided up into administrative expenses open space purposes etc of what i've just um, stated out there so this is just confirming that and allowing the town to be able to put those in that money into the specific accounts it needs to be thank you any further discussion on the item seeing none all in favor please signify by saying aye, aye. any opposed please say nay we pass it unanimously. Article 32, a commemorative plaque. Mr. Moderator, I move to see if the town will vote to appropriate for historic preservation purposes the sum of $950 from the Community Preservation Fund balance for historical preservation for the purchase and installation of a commemorative plaque for Northfield's first fire station or take any action relative thereto. Second. It's just... The, the motion I have in front of me is written is just ending at Northfield's first fire station, period. And is that, okay. Is yes. Is that as you um, wish to have it? Northfield's first fire station, some of you may not know, is the current Boy Scout house adjacent to the, uh, to, to the town hall. And the uh, community, uh, excuse me, my manners. I'm Ted Thornton, Highland Avenue. I represent uh, the Council on Aging on the Community Preservation Committee. The uh, Historical uh, Commission came to us and applied for a grant to uh, uh, affix this plaque to the, the door of the, uh, of the uh, current Boy Scout house to, to remind us that it was Northfield's first fire station. Thank you. Was there a second on that? I, I, I thought I heard one. Thank you. Any further discussion on the item? Seeing none, all's in favor, please signify by saying aye. aye. Any opposed, please say nay. Could we pass it unanimously? Article 33, to remove electrical wires from the south side of the town hall. I move the town vote to appropriate for historic preservation purposes a sum of 25,000 from the Community Preservation Fund balance for historical preservation and or the undesignated fund balance to remove the electrical wires and components from the south side of Town Hall and place them underground. Second. Discussion. So um, this becomes historical because the south side of the town hall, if you take a look at it, you will see it is draped with many wires uh, from various electrical, internet, communications. Um, so we're, this, is, this is something that needs to happen and they, the committee has, uh, I'm sorry, <laughs> the electrical committee that was working on this has applied to the, us, to the CPAs for historical funding because it is restoring that side of the building to its historical look, which would have absolutely no wires on it and cleaning up that whole look of the south side of the building. Further discussion? Yes, Jack. This is one of the last steps in the town hall electrical project that's been going on for the past uh, three or four years. And uh, there may be some odds and ends left to do after this, but this is for the most part gonna complete the bulk of the work. Any further discussion on the item? Seeing none, all's in favor, please signify by saying aye. 
Any opposed? Please say nay. This clearly passes. Article 34, a new child's playground structure. Okay. Mr. Moderator, I move the town vote to appropriate for open space recreation purposes the sum of $30,000 from the Community Preservation Fund balance for open space recreation and or the undesignated fund balance of the Community Preservation Act funds account to purchase a new children's playground structure at the Northfield Elementary School. Second. Thank you. Discussion? Right behind you. If you could step aside. Thank you. Hi, Cheryl George, Old Wendell Road. I'm also the co-chair of the PTO, and this is our secretary, Stacy Bond. Our principal, Megan Damaris, is also here tonight. The playground at the Northfield Elementary School I'm gonna hold this, is a place where children gather at recess, after school, on the weekends, and during vacations. The NES playground is also a gathering place for many families and serves as a community park after school hours. This grant will help to replace the play structures on the NES playground in order to make them safer for our children. Over the past several years, many dedicated volunteers have worked to improve the aging playground and have made significant improvements, most recently installing new swings. Thank you to the town of Northfield for that. It is now time to replace the aging play structures since the current structures are approximately 20 years old, are showing signs of deterioration and are no longer in compliance with current playground safety codes. Playground equipment is very expensive and not funded through the school budget. The PTO budget helps to fund other critical areas, including school supplies, classroom support, field trips, and enrichment programs. The PTO has been raising funds specifically designated for the playground, but this is proving to be a long process. In the meantime, the structures continue to deteriorate. The PTO currently has $10,000 dedicated for this playground renovation. The PTO has submitted other grant applications and has fundraising events planned for this spring with the proceeds benefiting the playground. In order to make this playground renovation plan a reality, we will need the help and support of the entire Northfield community, and together we can build a safer playground for our children. Any further discussion on the item? Yes. I encourage this. I was there 20 years ago. My son was eight. I helped build that playground structure. I helped fundraise it. and. It's time to do it again. This is what this town's about. It's about our kids. Further discussion on the item? Seeing none, would all those in favor please signify by saying aye? Aye. Any opposed, please say nay. Clearly passes unanimously. Article 35 on the CPA Act. I move the town vote to amend its acceptance of Chapter 44B of the Massachusetts General Laws, also known as the Community Preservation Act, by increasing the surcharge on uh, real property from the present level of 0.5% to 1%, beginning in fiscal year 2020, with such amendment to become effective upon approval of the voters at the November 6, 2018 election. Second. Thank you. Discussion? Oh, uh, the person who, who made the motion can speak first. Yep. Okay. And then? So, um, again, Tony Mateo is our uh, the committee, the ch chair of the CPC committee, and um, he was supposed to be here tonight to speak to this. Unfortunately, he couldn't join us. So I'm going to do my best uh, while here. Basically, we want to, the community, the CPA Act enables us to raise money through surcharge so that we're able to fund such things as um, money to get a new playground structure for things such as rebuilding the town hall front steps, for, th uh, for improving the library projects, for improving the north building, the front, the columns, and the steps of the north building of the elementary school, which is something we had voted in last year. All of this is from the money that we've been raising since we voted this act in back in 2008. Um, Every time we get state matching money for this 0.5%, so if we're asking for 1%, we're going to be getting more state money. And we want to start raising more money so we can do more for the town, so we can you know, approve of more of these projects. And looking forward ahead to projects such as the Shell Bridge project, which is coming along, and which will probably have proposals and plans, hopefully, to add in a park. 
money for that park possibly could come from the CPA money. So we're sort of looking to the future and looking to build up our balance. It's not increasing a tax. Tony asked me to make sure to try to make sure I could make this clear. It's a surcharge. It's an assessment. It's 0.5 percent of what you are paying. So this is very rough numbers. They're not exactly accurate, but they're going to give you the ballpark figure. If, for example, your real estate is val at valued at around $200,000, 0.5% of that, this is from tax, uh, from our tax numbers uh, from a few years ago, so it's not entirely accurate. Once you do all the math, what you're paying towards the CPA would just be $16. That's what we're getting from you for roughly around that. I hope that helps kind of put things in perspective. So we're asking to raise that to 1%. So then instead of that $16, we're going to get that $32. And that means if we're getting that $16, whatever money that the state was going to give us for that $16, we're going to get double that amount for the, you know, the $32. So again, we're, we want to take advantage of the state money while they still have it. And they're, you know, I'm using it to match our funds. Further discussion? Yes, Brian. <coughs> Brian Bordner, Ash Willett Road, 2008. We ended up at a half a percent. It was a much higher percent. And a couple of the old town fathers, Bob Barnes, who was 44 years in the zoning board, and Hank Henry, who was on the finance committee, and many other committees, and I got together and we sat down and we went through the CPA and we saw what we liked and what we didn't like. And so we took it upon ourselves to bring a vote before the town back then. And it was to lower the CPA to a half a percent. And the reason we did it is after reading the legislature, I found it particularly corrosive. It's well-intentioned. It's well-intentioned people. I'm not gonna malign them for what they're doing. They're volunteering. But it's well-intentioned people playing with other people's money. Now that vote back then, I believe we won in the mid 60s percent. So that's kind of a pretty good statement as to how the town felt. Now we wanna put it on a ballot again. Well, I thought the voters have spoken, but I guess they're gonna to have to speak again. Um, well-intentioned people playing with other people's money. Mr. Moderator, I move for a ballot vote. We can, we can certainly do that. Okay. And if there's, if there's support, we don't need a motion. We can just go directly to a ballot support. If there are others, when it comes time to vote, I'll ask. Yes, in the back. Patter Fields, 60 Highland Avenue. I just wanted to remark to what Brian said that um, I believe that in I every case, we are not playing with your money. In every case, we are actually voting here at town meeting on whether or not we approve the expenditure of this money. Yes, in the back. Amy Pelletier, 122 Warwick Road. Um, I believe, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, that when we started out, this was initially a 3% surcharge. And um, I think I need to reinforce that the first $100,000 in value of your property is exempt from that charge. First 100000 if, if you could speak a little closer to the mic. Okay. So I believe the first $100,000 of your property is exempt from that surcharge. So it's anything over $100,000 is now at half a percent. I don't think raising that to 1% is going to have a huge impact on anybody. Um, I don't think people are playing with other people's money. I sort of resent that impression because again, we've saved $40,000 in taxes that, to repair the front hall, front town hall steps just spent $30,000 to put in new playground equipment for the school. That's money that 
we don't have in our tax base that's improving the town, everybody approved those expenditures. I think they're beneficial and I don't think that half a percent is going to make a huge amount of difference, but certainly everything that this board works on is approved here at town meeting and nobody is playing anybody's money. For the discussion on the item, is anybody who hasn't spoken wish to speak again? Yes, in the back. Well, I'd like to speak. Oh, excuse me. No, no uh, I recognize him and then, and then you can go. I think it's important to consider when you're voting on these things that just because there's money available from the state doesn't make that free money. That still is tax money. Whether we pay through income tax or real estate tax, it's still taxes. So I'd urge you not to vote for an increase. Yes. Uh, Joanne McGee, Main Street. This CPA money is really important. And when it helps us apply for grants, for doing other projects. For example, when we passed the Brush Mountain Conservation Area and we received uh, $35,000 from the Recreational Trails Act, we were able to put money, the town showed that it cared about this project by putting in some money. So all of these things, if you vote for the CPA money and it's used to generate grant revenue money for other projects, it's really important that the town show support with this money. So I urge you to vote to raise this to 1%. We're the only town in Massachusetts out of 172, I think, that are be that's below 1%. We were kind of beaten down to lower this to 5%. It was appalling because we lost out on so much tax money. So I think it's time to bring it up to the 1%. Further discussion, anybody who hasn't spoken, please hold your applause for the vote at the end. We'll definitely have time to express ourselves in the back, yes. I just want to clarify, as I'm reading this, it looks like we're not actually voting to have this come into effect, but voting to have it be voted on Correct. in November. So it's not the final decision that we're doing now, we're just voting to have it proceed. Just wanted to clarify that. Yes, over here. Hi, I'm Carol Lebo. I'm in the, I <coughs> represent the Historical Commission on the CPA Committee. And I'd like to just put a little time reference in here. I don't know my years exactly, but after we had voted in the 3% tax, it was very shortly after that that it got lowered to a half percent before the impact of the things that the money could do was seen. It's now been a number of years since it was uh, voted to a lower number, and I think as we look around and see uh, some of the, the, I think we haven't mentioned the clock on First Church um, as, another, I, as another item that, that came from the uh, CPA money. Um, and so I would like you to think about that. And also, we are kind of proud of the history that is represented in Northfield as one of the oldest towns in this particular area. And we'd like to have more people appreciate it and I think this is a way of having that happen as well further discussion from anybody who hasn't spoken yet yes Joanne flag Parker Ave um, it sounds to me like these projects which can be deemed small are projects that are important to our town because it keeps those small pieces from going to disrepair which can lead the town to be shabby and whatnot and as far as tax money goes, if it's tax money that we can get by putting in some of our own, if we don't take that tax money that we've paid into, somebody else sure is. Please hold your applause. We'll, we'll be voting after. Has anybody not spoken yet on this item wish to speak? Brian. Hmm. Brian Borden, Ash Willett Road. Well, I pay about $12,000 a year in taxes. Cost me $1,000 to hang my hat every month in this town. And once again, I go back to what I said at the beginning of this meeting. Where has been the Yankee frugality that made this valley what it was? It's all gone. There's all another project that needs funding 
another this, another that. You were just talking about spending $16,000 and $20,000 and whatever. This adds up to money that goes across all of us. And there's only 3,000 of us. And how many of those are really taxpayers? Now, I'm sorry. I'm fighting this because it cost me $1,000 to hang up my coat every day for a month in this town. That's expensive. And you can keep going, but sooner or later, just like everything else, it's going to become unsustainable. Any further discussion on the item? Any at all? There was a request for a ballot vote. Is there support for a request for a ballot vote? Just raise your hand if you'd like to see a ballot. I only see three. I'll give it one more shot. I'm looking for about seven votes to support a ballot vote. And we will do a voice vote on this. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed, please say nay. Nay. Clearly passes. Article 36, for the Conservation Commission to obtain the serv services of a forester. Mr. Moderator, I move the town vote to raise and appropriate a sum of $4,000 for the Conservation Commission to obtain the services of a forester. Discussion on the item. Bill Llewellyn, Chair of the Conservation Commission. Uh, Conservation Commission is in charge of all conservation restrictions in town. Uh, the Conservation Commission is in charge of all conservation restrictions in town. There are many different types. The Northfield Forest is under one of these. So we're in charge of what goes on that. And it's gotten to more than the Conservation Commission can handle. So the Stewardship Committee was formed to take part of that responsibility. So they monitor all of these. And in this situation, money is requested. So it has to go through the Conservation Commission but the Stewardship Committee with the Conservation Commission will be working on this project. So Catherine will explain the project. Further discussion? Yes. I'm Catherine Johnson, 416 Millers Falls Road. So the uh, Stewardship Subcommittee to the Conservation Commission would like to um, proceed with a thinning project of one of the six stands in the Northfield Town Forest. Um, I have maps and stuff here. If you guys want to come look, you can afterward. But um, it is a thinning project, not a wholesale timber harvest, um, as recommended in the forest management plan that, that was written and adopted in 2011 for this property. Any further discussion on this item? Seeing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed, please say nay. Clearly passes unanimously. Article 37, to jointly contract for electricity supply. Susan O'Connor, uh, co-chair of the Town Energy Committee. Mr. Moderator, I move the town vote pursuant to Massachusetts General Law, Chapter 164, Section 134, to authorize the Board of Selectmen to initiate the process to aggregate the electricity load of residential and business electricity consumers within the town and to enter into agreements for services to facilitate the purchase of electric energy and other related services either independently or in joint action with other municipalities. Okay. Thank you. Discussion? So I want to just uh, start out by saying that um, the town meeting voted on this electric aggregation effort back in 2011 when it was being an, an effort led by the Hampshire County of Governments. The um, aggregation effort did not um, come to fruition. And so this year, um, uh, Northfield, along with 12 other Franklin County towns, are working with 
the Franklin Regional County of Governments to go to aggregation. The Energy Committee has um, been part of a green community's effort since 2011, but the priority for those efforts is on making town buildings more energy efficient. Electric aggregation is one way for us to be able to provide uh, residents and businesses with a chance to do something around making, um, moving toward uh, more renewable energy. So this process helps us to work with other towns to buy electricity in bulk. The 13 towns are committed to trying to make sure that the rate for this aggregation would be at or below the current rate you pay for basic service from Eversource. However, Eversource is only required by the state to have 13% renewable energy in its electricity. And we would be able to, through this aggregation process, increase the amount of green um, energy in our electricity. And also, um, uh, what we love about it is that it provides a choice for residents and businesses. If you don't want to be part of this, you can opt out. If you like the idea of having more renewable energy as part of your electricity, we hope to provide an opt up option where you could ask for more, might cost a little more than the basic rate. But we feel like it's a win-win because people can choose to do what they want with the aggregation. Any further discussion? Yes. Skip. Yeah, skip the Nell Fire Chief. I just got a couple of questions. The aggregation will be monitored on, on an annual basis, or, or how, how will that be taken a look at? And my other concern was, <clears throat> is as a taxpayer and as, as a department head, we were in a cooperative, electrical cooperative, I believe it was, with the school districts, and my, our, the f bills of the fire station almost doubled to a point in, in, in when we finally got out of it or, or got that taken a look at because the cost of the fire station electricity in, in two buildings almost doubled. I know the EMS building, if Mark is here, almost doubled. So I just want to know, I understand the aggregation as far as going to green green energy, and I and I support that. But there's, I just want to make sure that the cost involved doesn't also all of a sudden do what it did to the budgets of the fire department back a few years ago. Okay. Is anybody wish to speak who hasn't spoken yet? Yes, down in the back. Kevin Gary on Maple Street. Um, one of the questions that I have is with Eversource. I'm an Eversource customer. I was contacted by another company, electric company, to change over at a less reduced rate. I contacted Eversource and they told me that they could, I could do that, but my last six months of what I was being charged would have doubled because they have the, the right to up the rate if you leave Eversource and you have to pay the higher rate for the last six months to do that. Uh, would we still be Eversource customers or would we now be somewhere else and, and I don't know if I was lied to, but Eversource told me that six months they could, my past six months, they could have in increased the rate and I would have had to pay the excess. Any further discussion on the item? Yes, Bob? I would advise being careful with this too. Uh, aggregation is fine. I'd like to know how far out into the future you would take this aggregation. I've seen of proposals before that would go 20 years and such. At the transfer station, um, I lowered my, my request for money and I had to ring, bring it back up. We get bills from Eversource or whomever. And it says, you're doing great. You've saved 25 or 28% over last year's electrical bill for that period but it's still a lot higher than it was last year. And I'd like to look for ways that we could aggregate to save money, not just go green. I mean, I think we need to try and get the best price on energy. Further discussion, uh, yes, anybody who hasn't spoken yet, yeah. You'll certainly get to go again. We're just gonna give everybody a 
Chance to go around once first. Yes. Andrew Goodwin from Gulf Road. Um, I've worked on these in the past when I was with the town of Irving on the select board. I think just for clarity, it's not you have an option that you can opt out. If you want to opt out, you have to. So just for clarity there, you, you're going to be automatically signed up and then you have to opt out. Further discussion? Yes, down here in front. Uh, from, the, from the reading, I'm uh, Jerry Scott, Meadowview Lane. Uh, from the reading I've done, aggregation is not an idea that is yet, okay, a well vetted. Uh, Ohio is doing it, it's doing an opt out system. Massachusetts has one available. This would be one of those. Questions to think about is it will not necessarily lessen the cost of electricity, but it will necessarily make us all pay, whether we opt in or opt out, for the bureaucracy to run it, for the time to negotiate it and set it up, to get results that are not reliable. We don't know whether it will call, cost less or how much it will cost less. Depending on how it's set up, you can also end up getting stuck with an opt-out fee. In other words, if you choose to opt out, okay, you're going to pay a penalty for opting out. Okay? That depends on how it's negotiated. Uh, I don't think it's time yet. I would like to see a few other Massachusetts communities try it and see how it's working out. Yes, down front. No, nope. um, anybody who hasn't spoken first er, yet can go first and then. I'm Lynn Hansel, um, 28 Old Elm Way, and I'm also a co-chair of the Energy Committee. Um, and we have held t two public forums on this issue. Um, and we also have put on the town website a slideshow regarding this issue. And Susan, who is our other co-chair, has been attending the meetings at the FRACOG regarding this. Um, and I'd like to just clarify a couple of things that I'm aware of, which is that many communities in the state of Massachusetts have already endeavored into electricity aggregation, and they are consistently finding that their rates are at or below whatever source charges. And we have documentation for that if anyone, el if anyone would like to see that. The other thing is that you will not have a fee to opt out of Eversource because you will get a letter from Eversource that will ask you if you would like to opt out. It's a postcard. You would simply put your name on there and say opt out and you will not be charged a fee. The fees come in if you have contracted with another electric uh, provider other than Eversource. That's what you should check. But Eversource will not charge you a fee to opt out. And opting out is extremely easy. It's a postcard that will automatically be sent to all Eversource customers. If you would like to opt out, you just check the box and stick it in the mail and you have opted out. So everyone in this community would have the option to have a choice. Those of us who would like to participate on the residential level in electric aggregation and increase our residential green energy use would have the ability to do that and everyone who would rather not can opt out without bureaucracy and without additional charge any further discussion on that from anybody who hasn't spoken yet yes down here in front did you still want to speak did you still want to speak again Yes, please come down front. I have a question. Um, question, if anybody wants to talk about this. Will we still have, right now, if you have solar panels, there's net metering, and Eversource will uh, have to buy the electricity that you are producing. Will this still be the case when, if we are part of this aggregation, if you have personal solar panels? It will? Yeah. Thank you. Please. I know it's a desperate urge to because it sounds like a simplicity, but uh, anybody else who hasn't spoken wish to speak? If not, yes, definitely. 
Okay, I wanted to respond to a couple of the points made. First of all, um, it's 145 towns in Massachusetts that have gone aggregation. There are 18 towns alone in Berkshire County. We have an interest, the Franklin County Group has an interest in linking with those 18 towns up in Berkshire County. It's been very successful for them. Typically, uh, the statewide average for the number of residents that opt out, just given that there seems to be a lot of concern about being able to opt out, only three to seven percent of people opt out. I also want to say that people can opt out whenever they want. When this goes through, if it goes through, it'll probably be spring when you are sent a letter saying that your town has aggregated and send in this postcard if you want to opt out. But you would be able to opt out with a simple phone call at any, at any point. Um, the solar issue, there will be nothing that changes about your solar, um, your SREX or anything. Everything still goes through Eversource. It's still the same meter. You get your bill from Eversource. So nothing changes there. Um, there was one more thing I wanted to say, and that is that um, through this process, um, the aggregator has to go through a very, very rigorous plan creation that then is reviewed by the Department of Public Utilities. That process will take about eight months and it's a very, very carefully vetted process. So we have a lot of protection in that. Thank you. Yes. Mr. Moderator, Annie Chappelle, 25 Glen Road. I've served on the Energy Committee here for a number of years. I've served in Northampton for the Energy Committee. I'd just like to add that there are a number of jobs in this state related to renewables. And the more we support that, the closer we get to carbon neutral and the importance of supporting our wonderful planet. And I'm just lobbying for your children and grandchildren here. Thank you. Further discussion? Yes. Julia. A couple of the, the comments addressed how long of a contract this might be. Um, and discussion um, with the Franklin County Group has looked at one, two, or up to th a three-year contract um, with an aggregator that then would be renewed or not, depending on how it goes. Further discussion? Seeing none. All's in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. All's opposed, please say nay. Aye. Clearly passes. Article 38, Stabilization Fund. Discussion. Does anybody wish to speak on the motion? Who is in favor first? Yes. Brian, come on down. It wasn't an attempt not to have you speak, Brian. We just usually let the mover of the motion speak first if they want to. So. Um, I remember not so many years ago. We didn't even have a stabilization, stabilization fund. And it was one year that I think they realized it was kind of difficult. It wasn't that long ago. And they wanted to raise, put in $80,000 to a stabilization fund. And we all voted it in. And everybody was happy. And it was a good thing because it had become a little bit difficult to navigate through some of the unexpected things but it was only it was only eighty thousand dollars and now we're here not too many years later at two hundred thousand dollars well I find it hard to believe that you can't budget and forecast accurate within two hundred thousand dollars because that's what stabilization money does it fills in the, the valleys and assumes that there's not going to be any peaks but I'm not really willing to 
give the town two hundred thousand dollars just in case of an emergency I thought that's what the budget was all about but don't worry it's only sixty seven dollars per person in town not a big deal yes Stabilization is not an in case of emergency fund. It's a savings fund. It's putting it away for a future time and it takes a two thirds town meeting vote to get that money back out. So we're not going to act on it without your consent. Yes, Jack. As, as Lois said earlier tonight, the stabilization fund is essentially our savings account and uh, it's often used for large purposes. Uh, stabilization money was used to buy uh, the fire truck before uh, oh, five or six years ago now skip and uh, it's it's nice to be able to purchase large capital improvements that are desperately needed without going to an override and that's essentially the function of a stabilization fund is a savings account for large uh, capital expenses Further discussion on the item? Yes, Deb. Um, this is a, the stabilization fund, um, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, but it will increase the tax levy or the tax burden two and a half percent. So we hit that mark. Am I correct in that? So that no, the, the is that correct? The stabilization. Let's wait till she's done, Jack. Okay, sorry. So <laughs> I. So we voted $350,000 into the stabilization fund a year ago. That's what we just voted to pay for the ladder truck. So when you, you put as much as you can into the stabilization fund so that you get the tax spread to 2.5% so that next year you can go again from that 2.5% to the next 2.5%. That's how I'm thinking. Anybody who hasn't spoken wish to speak again? Jack. Uh, Deb, that's not quite correct. Uh, the stabilization fund doesn't have an impact on the proposition two and a half factors of our tax base. It is, an, it is funded by the taxes, but it's not bringing it up to the levy limit that's affected by proposition two and a half this whole budget uh, we're voting on tonight the operating budget and all the capital improvements is still over five hundred thousand dollars less than what our levy limit is so uh, the select board and the finance committee have tried to be conservative in terms of not spending to the levy limit uh, hence we're 500,000 under it but the again the stabilization count is our savings account this money may be used in the future for other highway trucks backhoes it may contribute to the emergency services facility uh, but it's it's look a savings account looking forward and not meant to just take up money from the tax base. I don't know if that clears anything up. But Any further discussion on the item? Uh, we didn't go as high as we could with the stabilization deliberately, as Jack said, here to keep the tax rate down. So we started out with talking about double this amount, and we kept it at 200000 Anybody who hasn't spoken yet wish to speak again? Yep. Uh, just a, um, could you just tell me please what the um, what the number would be to go up two and a half percent of budget from last year what the levy would be, what it would be do you know Lois so if, that there wouldn't be an override she can seek the floor later if, if you have anything else to say please say it and then sit down I'm not, I'm not sure. it, it's just not a question and answer back and forth Deb. We've, we've, I we've been through that. I just asked for a, um, a number. And, and she can, that's, that's a question, and she can answer that if she wishes after you sit down. I guess I don't understand. 
Does anybody else wish to speak on the item? I don't understand what she means. But we're, but we're, but we're under the levy limit yeah. by 500000 with everything yeah. you've got there. Jack was right. Betty already said that, so I don't know if you want to reinforce that. But no. other than that, I don't understand. She'll go on and on. Does anybody from the Finance Committee wish to speak? I can't quite see over there, so you're kind of hidden behind the table. <laughs> not okay anybody else wish to speak seeing no further discussion on the item all's in favor please signify by saying aye aye any opposed please say nay yeah. clearly passes article 39 petition relative to Columbus Day Uh, moderator, I move the town vote to proclaim and designate the second Monday in October as Indigenous Peoples Day instead of Columbus Day and be recognized as such on all official town business, calendars, websites, minutes, announcements, social media, and other communications. Second. Thank you. Discussion? D did you wish to speak on the item, Joe? Yeah. Okay. You, you can certainly go first. So, um, everybody take a deep breath because there's no money involved here. <laughs> it's strictly, uh, strictly a matter of uh, easing ourselves into the 21st century and um, uh, realizing that Columbus uh, never visited Northfield and had anything to do with it. But um, for 10,000 years uh, prior to Columbus bumping into the eastern shoreline of North America. Um, people were here with a very um, vibrant culture and uh, Northfield has much, much to gain by incorporating our past 10,000 years of indigenous history along with our jaw-dropping uh, colonial uh, uh, history from uh, 1673 and um, so we have a great deal to offer people who would want to come for cultural tourism, and uh, this is part of that process. Any other further dis other discussion? Yes. I couldn't, I couldn't agree more, but I don't think, okay, the politically correct method, okay, of denying, okay, the northern European history of our culture is necessarily the, necessarily the way to do it. Culture doesn't have to be a zero-sum zero game. We can remember that the existence of this kind of a meeting for these purposes, okay, is predominantly a Greek, and from Greek through European invention. Columbus was European, and he did, maybe, he was the first European to strike the Americas, although more likely it was a Viking, okay? But he's been honored for his place in history, okay, for a long, long time. I would propose rather than taking Columbus Day away, why doesn't the town consider an Indigenous Peoples Day? And not just Indigenous Peoples, but let's name the tribes that were here. They do have names, okay? Uh, Pokemon, Nipmunk, pop possibly some Pentecost, mostly members, okay, of the Algonquin language group. They deserve a day of their own. Consider that. Yes. Margaret Livingstone, Warwick Road. Um, I am in favor of an Indigenous Peoples Day to replace Columbus Day as Columbus never set foot on the North American continent. He set foot on the island of Hispaniola, later known as Haiti and Dominican Republic, promptly enslaving the Aiti nation down there, um, turning them into slaves to find gold, cutting their arms off if they didn't find enough, giving their children to the rest of the sailors to be raped. Theoatmeal.com, well-researched, go look it up. 
Yes. As has been mentioned, Columbus did not actually discover America. Of course, he did set sail from Spain, who funded his journey in 1492, hoping to find a route to India. But as mentioned, he landed in the Caribbean. He didn't discover America. He never set foot in North America. During four separate trips that started with the 1492 one, he landed on various Caribbean islands. Um, he also explored uh, Central and South American coasts, but he didn't actually reach North America, which of course was already inhabited by the indigenous people. And he also, by the way, never thought he had found a new continent. You may also remember that, it's, as has been mentioned, um, it's believed that the Norse, the Norse explorer Leif Erikson reached Canada perhaps 500 years prior to 1492. And there are some who believe that Phoenician sailors crossed the Atlantic even earlier than that. Not that he wasn't a brave explorer, but let's look at the myth of discovery. If I sailed down the Connecticut River from the boat ramp near my house, down to Four Star Farm, further down the Connecticut, whether or not the Latoiles are home, and I declare that I have discovered a new land, you would call me crazy and you would be right. How can I discover a place that's already inhabited? Of course, what's not emphasized, and you may criticize this as political correctness, I'm not, I'm not ashamed of standing up against racism. What's not emphasized is that Columbus was the first white person, not counting the Vikings, to make it to the Caribbean, and finding it inhabited by non-Europeans, non-whites, claimed it for Spain. Research by some scholars provides that the population estimates of the pre-contact Americas to be as high as 112 million in 1492, while others estimate that it might be um, somewhat less. But in any case, the native population declined to less than 6 million by only 1650. And that demographic disaster continues to this day, helped by all the others who followed in Columbus's wake. So let's not call any more attention to the myth that Columbus discovered America when he never set foot anywhere near what is now the US. He wasn't the first European to get to the New World. And let's stop minimizing, ignoring, and making invisible the civilizations that predated him by tens of thousands of years, including right here in our town of Northfield. Thank you. You will certainly have a chance to vote, and you can express your support then. Yes. Hi. Can you hear me? Yep. Um, Amy Tibbetts. I live in Northfield. Um, I also teach second grade at Northfield Elementary School. I just wanted to share a quote from one of my seven-year-olds, and not my seven-year-old, my, my student seven-year-old. Um, after we studied um, the history of exactly this subject, one of my students said, now that I know the truth about what happened, I just can't seem to call it Columbus Day. So maybe we can get up with the thinking of seven and eight-year-olds. <laughs> Further discussion in the back, yes. Hello, I'm Vince Capasso, 47 Highland Avenue in Northfield. Excuse me. <coughs> I hate to speak in public, so I have some notes so I can keep my train of thought. Can, can you hold the mic a little bit closer? I'm sorry. Sorry. I, I'm sorry. Um, first thing, the state still calls the holiday Columbus Day. Has anybody given any thought to how that affects the town workers? Will they still be given holiday pay, time, whatever it is? I don't know anybody who said that. Um, I won't go into the history of this because we've been adequately educated by certain people here today about that. But let me say this. Columbus Day is not about Columbus. It's about Italian-American heritage. Okay? I have a heritage. I agree with you. I agree very much with what you said. I think Columbus was a racist and I'm Italian. Okay? But I don't think by taking away Columbus Day or the name Columbus Day is right at all. I think it denies me my heritage from my family. Um, 
one other, one or two other things, and I know it's late, so I'm sorry. If you want to address the fact that he was a racist and he did terrible things, I think your idea was tremendous, right? Have an indigenous people celebration whenever, wherever you want to. That's way better than changing what we have now, in my opinion. And finally, I have to say this, <clears throat> pardon me. I have a personal interest in this, okay? I'm a second generation Italian. My grandparents came through Ellis Island and they worked hard for the American dream. They asked for nothing, they just worked hard. In addition to that, my father and my uncle, who was actually born in Italy, fought in the uh, Second World War in combat in Italy against their families. Just think about that. You know, my father was in the artillery lobbing bombs onto people who could have been his family, for all he knew. So I have to say that, granted, my request may be selfish, but I will say this. Um, I hope people will understand what I'm saying, that it's wrong to erase anyone's history, okay? Including mine, including the Italian Americans, um, just because it's politically correct. And that's what I believe is going on here. That's just my thing. Um, because horrible things were done 500 years ago, like I said, by ignorant, racist, horrible people, doesn't mean that we should distract from the celebration of Italian American culture. That's how I feel about that. You know, to, to pass this article, I believe, would demean all those accomplishments, and personally, I would take this as an insult to my family. Thank you for your time. Further discussion? Yes, Robert. Uh, Robert Hall, uh, 14 Pentecost Road. Robert. Can I you am? hold the mic just a little bit closer? I am. <laughs> okay. Uh, the word indigenous implies. I'm good. <laughs> Thank you. The word indigenous, can you hear me now? No. The word indigenous implies Native American. And uh, we're not talking about Native American Day. We're talking about simply a people's day. So why don't we just drop the word indigenous and leave the rest of it in there. And we have a designation for Columbus Day of People's Day. And what's wrong with that? So further discussion on this item. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all's in favor of the item, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed, please say nay. Nay. We're going to have a show of hands. We don't need the counters. I just want to see the hands first. We, we might need the counters later. But all's in favor, please raise your hand. All's opposed, please raise your hand. I regret to say we are going to need the counters. <laughs> I tried to make it quick, folks. We can have the counters come on down. All right, all those in favor, please raise your hands, keep them high, make sure it's the hand with the little wristband on it. Encounters, if you let me know when you're done with a section, I can let them put their hands down. My left side, far left, can put their hands down. You like close votes tonight. 77 in favor, 79 opposed. The motion does not pass. <laughs> Article 40. No. By petition to amend section one of the PVRS agreement. <laughs> does anybody wish to make the motion under Article 40? This was submitted by a citizen petition. All right, Mr. Moderator, I move that the town vote to amend Section 1 of the Pioneer Valley Regional School District Agreement as set forth in Article 40. Second. Thank you. Does anybody wish to speak first on this item? And just to clarify, you're speaking in favor of the motion? No questions. I am speaking against the motion. Is there anybody wish to speak in favor of the motion first? You may speak against, yes. 
I would just, excuse me, Kathy Hawkins Harrison, 65 Ash Willett Road, um, former employee, employee of the Pioneer Valley Regional School District, more importantly, someone who has been attending school committee meetings for many years um, and regularly for the last year and a half or so. This particular article um, felt like it came out of the blue by one individual person during a school committee meeting a couple of weeks ago. And I would like to suggest that the timing of this article is not now. It could be in the future that we absolutely have to make a decision about the changing the configuration of our school committee and so on. I would suggest that that would come as a recommendation from the heart committee, which has been working for almost a year now, looking at different possibilities and options for our schools and more than likely looking at the configuration of the school committee as well. So I guess my comment would simply be that I don't think the timing is correct at this point. Nathan? Anybody else wish to speak? Yes. I'm going to speak against this. Um, I'm Lynn Hansel. I live at 28 Old Elm Way. And I, uh, full disclosure, I am a teacher in the district who has also been attending school committee meetings, not with the same regularity as Kathy, but with great regularity. And I do feel like this has come out of the blue. And my question would be, who does this benefit? That's a question to ask. Um, I can see a reason for wanting to reduce the size of the school committee because the larger a committee is, the harder it is to reach consensus and to make uh, decisions that are not contentious. Um, but I also feel, as Kathy does, that now is not the time to do that. I would also like to encourage people in all four towns that if they are dissatisfied with the current school committee, that they, they voice that with their votes. And I would also like to encourage people who are interested in running for school committee in all four of our towns to step forward and do so. Thank you. Any further discussion? Yes. Yep, right here. Um, admittedly, we do have a rather large school committee but I, I have some concerns about creating a school committee with this configuration. Um, I see that a majority of the members of the committee would constitute a quorum. That means four members. And if Leiden and Warwick only have one person on the committee, then it seems to me that, though, that votes could be made uh, without the input of those people if they happen to not be able to make a committee meeting, and that does happen. Um, there are a lot of subcommittees from what I know. I am in education. I've been in education for 15 years as a teacher, and um, I'm currently uh, an instructional coach, um, not at the Pioneer District. But um, there are a lot of subcommittees, and I worry that there would be enough people to do the work of a school committee with so few members. Um, and I'm looking down on page 27 where is section c elections and under number two the way i figure it it says that berniston warwick and Lydon would vote one member for four years each and then berniston and northfield would vote one member for four years and one member for two years and then one at large for four years. And to me, that adds up to eight. But maybe my math is incorrect. I'm a math coach, so I hope it's right. Um, but anyways, those are my immediate concerns about changing to this configuration at this time. Yes, over here. Did, did you wish to speak? Yes. So I'm speaking for this. My name is Deborah Gilbert, and I'm from Bernardston, a resident and a taxpayer, and uh, I also sit on the school committee, and I am the one who put forth the proposed amendment. So it's not out of the blue. I've been on the school committee for three and a half years, and I've watched and taken in and gained some insight into a lot of things that I did not know previous. So. 
currently we have a 12-member board that's three people from each of the four towns and the reduction would go for seven it'd be two people from Berniston two people from Northfield one person from Warwick one person from Leiden with an at-large uh, person which could be from any member uh, town any any of the four towns uh, term limits um, we currently have no term limits it's by voting process and I would like to see a term limit of 12 consecutive years they're four-year terms and uh, we have people who have been on uh, school committee some of them for in excess of 25 years um, I would also uh, like to see there's conflict of interest and I would also like to see th no district employee who is receiving a paycheck uh, be able to be on the school committee it's just makes good business sense so how did this come about in regards to my thought processing the heart committee has been talking about changing the district agreement the school board has been talking about changing the district agreement updating the district agreement the boards of selectmen uh, from three if not four towns have been talking about changing the district agreement so some of the things that I thought about was if we reduced the numbers we would have a stronger more efficient and focused group on the board um, a board that would be current with the changing times new people coming through uh, say every 12 years roughly speaking with and except for the at-large person with the uh, term limits and people coming through you have the ability to have more connection from townspeople the community to the school community and I think that's a very positive thing to make more of a connection base um, term limits allow a board to grow in experience vision and financial capacity term limits prevent an individual board member from accumulating too much power over the rest of the board a board should have diversity and complementary skills that are utilized Changing roles will help keep the board members interested and engaged. As time rolls on, board members should get a little wealthier than previous board members. Any further discussion? Yes. Uh, Richard Fitzgerald, Main Street, Northfield. Um, I'm neither an educator nor a teacher but I'm a parent and for the, about, about the last year and a half I've been attending school committee meetings fairly regularly um, 15 or more meetings and these are just my observations and reasons that I object to this motion um, I agree that it's maybe not the right time but it could be something to consider down the road um, someone mentioned subcommittees there are currently seven subcommittees listed on the school committee website <clears throat> they don't all meet all the time they meet occasionally or seasonally as needed but one subcommittee per member doesn't really seem like a subcommittee um, maybe they're not all necessary they're also uh, having 12 members cut down to seven one thing I've observed is that school committees no joke uh, these members are responsible for putting together the school budget which was almost five million of the eight plus million dollar budget that we approved today that's a lot of responsibility for 12 people and uh, to drop it down to seven I would honestly like more voices at the table when it comes time to talk about budgets rather than fewer voices the question of 12 people can't get things done but seven could my final objection is that it's not the, the fact that there are 12 members of the school committee it's the 12 members who are the school committee right now to use the term drain the swamp I think would be appropriate I favor the school I favor term limits and the conduct that I've seen 
from some school committee members in the last year and a half is atrocious. The rudeness, the teaming up to silence voices, in one case, threatening to resign, stepping up, walking away from the table, and walking around lurking in the background with your cell phone is not appropriate behavior. I guess that's about it. That's all I have to say. Thank you. Give you lots of chance to vote and express your support or not. Yes, in the front. I'm sorry, I'd like to address the issue of conflict of interest, which is on page 27 at the top in bold print to be added in. Members that are elected to the school committee may not work in any capacity for the district or receive any payment for services. And um, I think that's a good thing to have in there relating to conflict of interest. For instance, as a teacher, I can't run for school committee. I'm a taxpayer in this town. I know a thing or two about education. I think I could actually benefit the school committee, but I'm prohibited. I think the same should be true for anybody who is paid in any capacity to work for any town in the school committee district. Yes. Kathy Malsh, Main Street, Northfield. I'm also a teacher here, taxpayer, parent of graduates of this school. Um, I have three concerns with this motion. One is with the term limits. Well, I understand the rationale for that. I think in many capacities of our small towns, we have a hard time getting people to step forward and participate in all the various um, positions, boards, committees, et cetera, that it takes to run our towns, our school, and all of those. And I think by putting term limits, you um, perhaps unnecessarily limit the co contribution of people who are willing to make that commitment. And I think the voters should decide on who that gets to be term after term. Um, secondly, I want to reinforce what Lynn just said. I strongly feel that if we are to limit that people who work for the district cannot serve on the school committee, I feel strongly that anyone who works for any of the towns um, should not be allowed to be on that committee either for this very similar reasons. Um, <clears throat> so term limits, the, um, the conflict of interest there. Um, I'm right there once, that's good enough, thank you. Further discussion? Yes, in the blue, sh blue jacket. I'm Martha Parker. I live on Meadowview Lane, and I have been... Could you speak a little bit closer to the mic? I have been actively observing the school committee for a few years, and I think everyone has made excellent, excellent points, all of them valid to some degree. I think, though, that it's late. We spent a lot of time on this, and since the four school uh, towns that are involved in the school district have to vote on something like this, and the warrants are only in three of the four towns, our discussion maybe could be tabled until this has been brought up and worked over by the Hart Committee and the changes that we make have been approved by the state uh, education department who have to approve any changes and the language of the changes. Maybe we could table this and we could wait until those things have been completed and there's some agreement within all the towns, and it's brought up by people who are on a committee working very hard to try to solve some of the structural problems of the school um, district and of the legal relationships we have as towns into the school district. You know, people have made good points, but even if we vote on it, nothing's going to happen because it's not even on the list of the warrants for each of the four towns. I think one thing to think about, uh, and this will be the end of what I have to say, it is important that um, the school committee be a functional size, but one thing <laughs> we have in our school committee agreement right now is that the power of the representation of each of the towns is equal. There's two people in each of the towns so if you have a town that has a small population, you still have the same number of votes. 
And I think that is important for the small towns, which we are not, um, and is, might be one of the reasons that it's set up the way it is, bulkiness aside. So I just wanted to say that. Any further discussion on the item? Yes, Tracy. I, I want to thank Deb for bringing this forward. It does need to be discussed. Um, I have served on the Heart Committee for over a year now, and it is something we've been discussing. We did make some recommended uh, changes to the school committee that have not been reviewed yet. Um, however, I've been in a community organizer in one way or another for over 20 years now, and Community Organizing 101 is to have public discussion about this. Yes, this is public discussion, but before you bring it for a vote, bring it out to forums, let people hear it, let them vet it. Uh, the select board chose not to put this on the warrant for that reason, and it was brought forward by a citizen's petition. Leiden did not put it on their warrant. It will take three of the four towns to pass an amendment, so that means all three that have it on their warrant must pass it. Uh, and the Heart Committee had a discussion with someone who recently retired from the Department of Elementary and Secondary Education last week about how this process might play out. She's not sure legally how it would play out, but we are violating our own agreement that the four towns made with each other. The process to amend the agreement is that the school committee either bring forward the recommendation or any of the member towns, 10% of the registered voters must bring forward the recommendation. We had 10 or 12 signatures, not 10% of our voters. So we are violating the agreement we made amongst ourselves. So I would recommend we vote against it, and I move the question. There's been a motion to move the question. Um, I didn't see anybody else that wanted to speak. If there's nobody else who wants to speak, we can dispense with moving the question and vote right on the item. Um, if anybody does want to speak, then we can certainly vote on moving the question. Did anybody else want to speak on the item? We will now, we, is there a second to moving the question? We will vote on moving the question. Moving the question is not debatable. It does require a two-thirds vote. All in favor of moving the question, which would not pass this motion. It would merely say, we're going to end debate and we're going to vote now. All those in favor of moving the question, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed, please say nay. Clearly obtains the two-thirds to bring this item to a vote. We will now vote on the main motion itself, which is as printed in Article 40. All those in favor of the motion as printed in Article 40, please signify by saying aye. Any opposed, please say no. Aye. This clearly fails unanimously. Article 41. Mr. Moderator, I move the town vote to adopt the resolution outlined in Appendix 2 of this document to wit. Resolution, whereas the efficient administration of town affairs is achieved through the largely voluntary assumption of official responsibilities by elected or appointed officers combined with the loyal and faithful service of salaried employees and whereas certain persons have during the calendar year of 2017 concluded periods of service during which they have made substantial contributions to the public wheel, be it resolved that the names and nature of services of the following named persons be herewith noticed and recorded in the minutes of this annual town meeting of 2018 in grateful recognition of their work on behalf of the town and with your permission, I'd like to read the names. Absolutely. Agricultural Commission, Jean Latois. Community Park Committee, Cynthia Mee. Council on Aging, Rhoda Yukovich, Gail Bedard. Cultural Council, Ruth Ann Paulson. Election Officer, Barbara Brasser, David Brasser. EMS, Todd Zernick, Cameron Kennedy, Joanne Newton, Carolyn Taylor. Carolyn Warger Zernick. Energy Committee, John Savasco, Bob Pasteris. Finance Committee, Chad Glover. Fire Department, Nate Hutchinson, Michael Grover, Alan Shedd, Rory Shippa. Four, Four Mile Brook Watershed Advisory Committee, Bob Duby, Bob English, Lisa McLaughlin, Howard Perea, Joan Dealey. Highway Department, Mike Mankowski, Tim Richter. Open Space Committee, 
Susan Ross, Kate Rossiter, Planning Board, Guy Gilbert, Police Department, John Richardson, Rec Commission, Scott Thayer, Sewer Commission, Paul Prest, Town Administrator, Paul Bochelle, Zoning Revision Committee, Rich Fitzgerald, Jack Spanbauer, Joan Stoya, Aaron Jaworski, and Kathy Wright. Thank you, thank you to you all. Thank you. Is there a second to that motion? Is there a second to the motion? Second. Any discussion? Um, I, I, I would beg your leave under discussion of this. Uh, Tracy. Thank you. Uh, Jack's going to hate this because he thought we'd get out by 9.22 and I'm making the, the uh, meeting longer. But I wanted to personally thank Jack Spanbauer. He has served this board for over 16 years and even longer for the town of Northfield. He's been the face of the select board through thick and thin. Thick and thin. He was my boss when I was town administrator and my mentor when I came on the board. The number of hours he spends on town business is innumerable. I will miss his wisdom and experience tremendously, especially when it comes to engineering and roads issues. I wish you a long, happy, actual retirement. And perhaps the next time you get the itch to come back to town government, Nancy can convince you to take up golf or something. <laughs> we, we, we do have uh, two more very brief items, and I would beg your uh, leave to read something from the Massachusetts House of Representatives. Be it hereby known to all that the Massachusetts House of Representatives offers its sincerest congratulations to Jack Spanbauer in recognition of over 16 years of dedicated service to the people and the town of Northfield. The entire membership extends its best wishes and expresses the hope for future good fortune and continued success in all your endeavors. And it's signed by Speaker of the House Robert A. DeLeo and our representative, Representative Paul Mark. We also have a citation from the Massachusetts State Senate. Be it known that the Massachusetts Senate hereby extends its congratulations to Jack Spanbauer in recognition of your 16 years of dedicated service to the town of Northfield. And be it further known that the Massachusetts Senate extends its best wishes for continued success that this citation be duly signed by the President of the Senate and attested and a copy, therefore, transmitted by the Clerk of the Senate. And it's signed by Senate President Harriet Chandler, Clerk of the Senate William Welch, and our former Senator Stanley Rosenberg. Thank you, Jack. Can, can, can you grab a mic, uh, Lois? I know it's a... Okay. Jack can hear you, but everybody else can. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I guess I... Okay. How's that? That works. Okay. Um, you were with Dufresne Henry. We had the Bennett... But you got to hold it up now. <laughs> <laughs> Bennett composting pending. And I think you were hired as a consultant maybe to the Board of Health. I think that's the first I saw of you here. And then came along the millennium and you were elected to the select board. And uh, I think there was a bit of a skepticism on both of our parts, wondering what it was going to be like. You on the select board and, and you'd heard about my reputation perhaps on the finance committee. And so how was this going to work out? And it's worked out fine. Uh, we've had a mutual respect and I've appreciated all you've done for the town and your knowledge as Tracy said your engineering background has been invaluable and I don't know what we're going to do without you really so uh, I appreciate having the opportunity to work with you finance committee and select board and it's worked out very well and wish you well for the future thank you thank you It's been my honor. Thank you very much. Thank you. Any further debate on this item? <laughs> Seeing none, a motion to adjourn is in order. Actually, sorry, sorry. We have to accept the motion. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Clearly passes unanimously. Motion to adjourn is now in order. Thank you. All those in favor of adjournment, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Clearly passes unanimously. <laughs>